Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Impact Theory. I am here with a return visit from the legendary Iceman himself, Wim Hof. Wim, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, thanks for having me. Dude, I am really excited to dive into a part two here. Um, the first time that we met, it was really extraordinary. We went pretty hard on the things that you're typically known for. But in the new book, um, The Wim Hof Method, you go into a lot of detail about something I wasn't expecting to see in your book, which is your personal story, how you were raised, how you developed your free spirit and willingness to not fit in and sort of the, the power of the mind. And so you said that there are three pillars. And I think this is really what I want to get into today. So you've got cold exposure, breathing and the power of the mind. And so I want to start with you as a kid coming into the world with a difficult birth. How did that begin to plant the seeds? Why did you open the book with that? I think everybody in the world um, who suffered a trauma is, be, uh, is uh, uh, deeply impacted, is deeply impacted. And uh, I was impacted from my birth because I was the second one uh, and nobody expected in those days there were no echoscopia uh, devices, measurement uh, things. It was all on a, on a horn, a little, a, a little uh, wooden horn. And, so when you say you're guessing. the second one, you mean you were an identical twin, your brother was born, yes. they send your mom back yeah. to the, the recovery room. Exactly. And then they found out, oh, there is another one. Let's get him out uh, through a cesarean because he is too deep in and we cannot get him out. Otherwise, he's going to suffocate. So they pushed me to the operation room. And just before the operation room, and my mother was, uh, she was aware they were going to do a cesarean. She, it's like fear. And, and she was a pious woman. So her, her belief uh, came to, oh God, let this child live. I will make him a missionary. And then she pushed me out in front of the rubber doors of the operation room. And, and that's the way I came to the world. Purple, because I always suffocated, and in the cold of the hall. That's it. With that invocation, with that invocation and that trauma together, that imprints deeply into his psyche, even when it is a baby and has no reference inside of the brain. It gets into that system. And that made me always different than of my identical twin. And then at the age of 17, I felt this attraction to go into cold water. And then I, I knew it. When I went in for the first time, freezing water, I knew this is it. Not This thinking, is the thing you've been looking for? Yes, connection with the deep imprint of my own personal trauma. And now uh, it shows that people go uh, into this uh, cold practice and into these breathing uh, practices, which comes from the cold. Because when you go into the cold, you, uh, you do, <gasps> you come alive. You come alive in connection with your biochemistry. And you begin to feel and understand sense that you are able to change the biochemistry by deep breathing. And what we do in our society is shallow breathing. We don't know the power of our own breath. And therefore, we don't know how to connect with our biochemistry. When it goes wrong because of stress, could be virus, bacteria, biological poison. It could be uh, a mental stress, emotional, whatever the stress is, it has an impact on our biochemistry. And through the deep breathing and manipulating the breath, you are able to alter the biochemistry again. How simple it all is. And because nobody wanted to understand that this is happening, and they're always oh, just philosophizing, he's crazy. What he is doing, he is crazy. Then I went to the university, and they injected me with a, uh, with a bacteria, 
And then I showed after 16,000 people who became sick with the same model of experimenting, which is an E. coli bacteria injection. It's a controlled endotoxemia model to experiment, to find out about the immune system. Are we able to tap into the immune system? 16,134 people all became sick. And then I came in and I showed I did not become sick with the same injection of the E. coli. Bacteria. All right, that, that's a, a very extraordinary journey. And your book does an incredible job of putting some structure to how we tie this traumatic birth to then how we're able to shut down an endotoxin when it's injected in us. And I want to try to recreate some of that here. So I actually wrote down a quote, if I can. This is you um, verbatim from an interview that you did. Um, and I thought that it was really, really interesting. And you said... I'm, I'm doing right now with top researchers on DNA to show that we have the absolute influence neurologically at will to enter into our own ancestral encrypted codes of the DNA, our genetic past, to enlighten our past right here in the moment. Now, yes. if, if anybody else made that claim, uh, I would probably be pretty dismissive of uh, its veracity. But when you make it, it really makes me want to stop and go, okay, what is it that leads you to say that and then how does that really manifest so i want to go back to the two things you said at the beginning that there was this traumatic birth and an invocation and tying that to this idea of the power of the mind and one last element which is you saying that modern society has disconnected us from our our natural environment what we're sort of from a evolutionary past what we're meant to do so help me understand how your traumatic birth leads you to become okay with being different than everybody so that you can discover this ability for us to reconnect. Yes, exactly. So it was my mother, a very pious, naive mother. In those days, you could not work anymore when you married. You had to stop working. So you could not go by to law. Your person. Yes, by law. By law, everybody, the man has to provide. That was in those days. So she was at home. She was uh, 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 intelligent, but she had no career, only having children. But she was also pious, a, a, a God-fearing person. And uh, she said that at that moment, that invocation. That she was going to make you a missionary? Yes, yes. And I was not aware of that, only I was different. And I came to know by talking to my mother later, very much later, that she said that. And, and, and she told me uh, the whole birth and she knew it like it was yesterday. So uh, she told me that 48 years later, I am in New York. I am doing a experiment in the uh, Feinstein Biochemical Institute and I am connected uh, to take blood uh, out of me while I'm doing what I'm doing. A heart meter, lung meter, it's all connected in a warm, nice room. And they asked me, do, do what the Iceman is doing. I just did breathing techniques and I gave it all. It gave it so much that they had to uh, take away the lung meter because I stayed more than two minutes without breathing. And then you get a flat line. They thought it's defect. And then they took it out. They came in another one, defect again. And at the third machine, I was on. I was on and I didn't care anymore. Uh, I stayed there for one hour and a quarter in that room and they took all the blood. And a week later, they called me. That was Dr. Ken Kamler. And he said, we have the blood results. And, uh, 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 and, and it shows that if you are able to reproduce this in a group of people, then that means huge consequences for human mankind. And then he named all these diseases related to the results I had let out there in the Feinstein Institute a week ago in the blood, showing that I was controlling the vagus nerve. 
And the vagus nerve is considered to be in science, in medical science, not to be controlled by humans. It cannot. But I showed big control in the vagus nerve. And if you are able to control influence into the vagus nerve, you are able to bring down inflammation. And inflammation is the cause and effect of any disease. Now, when you so, say that you could control the vagus nerve, are you talking about they could measure an electrical stimulus that you were sending to it? No, they, uh, uh, they took my blood and within the blood related to the vagus nerve, there are 307 blood values. And those blood values showed a complete difference than of a normal test person. When Dr. Ken Kamala had called me with the results saying, if you are able to reproduce this, then that means huge consequences for human mankind. Uh, uh, and then he named all these diseases, half an hour. And then, I mean, at that moment in the telephone, of course I can do that. The missionary was born consciously to my to my brain, to my consciousness, my awareness. It was there, boom, without saying. Half hour later, I got a telephone that my mother had died. Wow. You, you see how it all connects? And uh, this is just a personal story. Everybody has beautiful personal stories. And magic happens only if you look for it. And, and it makes all sense if you look deeply within yourself and find out why you are here, what for, and that you have a great impact possible by standing up and do things out of the box and do it. Be audacious, have no fear. How much, though, do you think that that is, they just don't know how to access that part of their brain? You said in the book something that I, I think addresses the opioid crisis more profoundly, which is you said everybody who looks towards the light is looking for purpose. And when I think about the opioid crisis, I think about that, like people not knowing what they want in life, people feeling completely disconnected from the world around them, from their body. Um, what do you there think? You Yes, into the darkness, into the no knowledge, into being desperately out there, into letting it go. They are completely lost in their lives. That, that the purpose of life itself is in, inside the brainstem. The brainstem is about life, about survival, life and death. So life is like light. Death is like shut down, darkness, over, done the light and uh, 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 how by neurology what is neurology it's electricity it's potentials neurotransmitters and you are the alchemist you are able this is what we have shown as well how to produce neural a uh, hundred ne uh, percent percent neural activity in the brain and with that you make the right biochemistry inside the brain for the will which is a neurotransmitters to connect with any part of the brain. That's the way we are naturally built to do. But because of our behavior, we disconnected from the right uh, biochemistry and we are limited. We are narrow minded. And uh, 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 the expansion of the neurology inside uh, the brain, which should be until you die expanding like fresh like a tree it always goes on 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 every spring new neurology neurology bigger bigger expansion expansion of consciousness and when you're ready you're ready man and then you have no fear you can go you can go you fly you know why and it is all in and that neurology now is the power of the mind, which we are going to show. But because nobody was listening and thinking that man is crazy, that's why I work with the top researchers in the world. Because the natives, hundreds of years ago, they knew, I bless your seven generations before. 
and your seven generations to come. What kind of stupidity is that? Uh, let's take over their land. It's uh, no, You are too primitive. And now, I tell you, we go back to our nativeness. We go back to respect and ancestry. And we go back to purpose. And now we can do this consciously. Before what, 50... Tell me, tell me what the point is. Why, why respect your ancestry? To an Eastern mind, I think that makes immediate sense. To a Western mind, I don't know that it does. Because uh, your purpose, if you get into the DNA, into the encrypted codes, damaged by trauma of your ancestors who passed on in generations their trauma in the genetics, then you feel relieved. You feel enlightened. So if we go for the best within ourselves, for a freedom, a fearless state of being, a very powerful being that is not being withheld, withheld by anything, if you like that, then you have to go and deal with the encrypted codes in the DNA and release it. Not a being profane and shallow, but going into the depth. And now we have, uh, uh, now we know how to do it. That's exactly what I was going to ask. So I think when people hear you talk about getting back into your DNA, um, going at one point you'd mentioned going back 11 generations, it sounds a little bit like past lives or somehow connecting to like a narrative or a story. Um, but I'm curious if what you've been laying out in the Wim Hof method, meaning that we're exposing ourselves to the cold, we're learning how to breathe, we're reconnecting with nature, we're tapping into that lizard brain, the brain stem, um, the fight or flight mechanisms and beginning to develop conscious control. Is that what you mean? That more holistic view of your own life of being exposed to the elements? Or is there something about like actually sort of going within yourself and meeting your grandfather, your great grandmother, so on and so forth? Yeah, uh, that one is very interesting, the last part. But now you come not only in the ability to enter into your DNA and how to strengthen yourself, how to influence the length of your life, the quality of life, because it all relates to the building blocks of life itself, which is the DNA and the genes and the cell structure. By going into these exercises, you will be able to grasp the purpose of your being, the purpose of the power of your mind to enter into the deepest of the cell, to uh, protect the cell from inflammation, oxidative stress, and to, uh, to, see, to, uh, to, uh, to see the repair, the, the deep healing inside and feel great about it. Is that an intuitive connection, though? Because when I, I'm trying to reconcile when you talk about the things that you do and the method that you use and when somebody injects you with a toxin and how you're doing it, um, it isn't like a conscious thing, at least that I've understood from you saying. It's not like you say, dear immune system, create more white blood cells, go and attack this. Maybe you do now because you understand the mechanisms, but certainly when you were starting, you didn't necessarily know what was going of on. Of course, of course. So is when you I say no go inside the cell, yes. what do you mean? What do I mean is going into the deepest and if, if feel no inhibition to solve anything that concerns my life, my purpose, my being. To By connecting get, to the lizard yeah. brain, brainstem, unconsciously. Brain, limbic system to go in, here it is, and to go now uh, to the threshold of the power of our uh, uh, unlimited power of our own brain that's that's what i am at and i'm only at the threshold i'm showing now that placebo does not exist anymore it is now conscious control and this is what that's the professor interesting yeah this is what the professors say wim hof has found uh, the power uh, the secret of placebo and that means that healing power within us is now able to be not only there because we believe it, but also to be amplified if it's necessary. Can that, I say what is, I think you just said in different words yes. and you tell me if I've got this correctly? Yes. By exposing ourselves to cold, by learning to breathe, 
And by letting go, as we're experiencing this pain, letting go, not fighting it, so we can develop a connection to the brainstem, essentially, the unlimited power that we're experiencing of the mind is unlimited in terms of the body, that you can take control through intention. You talked earlier about the power of intention. Through intention, but not like consciously saying, go create 72,000 more white blood cells, but just through that connection that you now have had by letting go and not resisting. Yeah, the power of intention. You don't need to know this all uh, to get there. You, I, I, I never saw DNA in the wild. <laughs> I didn't see a bacteria in the wild or a virus in the wild. Uh, it's too wild for words. But this is where we got with our extension tools, our uh, 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 measurement devices, microscopes, and all those things we learned uh, to uh, take that as the truth. So I go through the truth, uh, through what we think is the truth, because we left our simple uh, belief in our, uh, the power of our mind just to create happiness, strength, and health, and guarantee it for our children. No, we had to take the land and more and more and produce and more and more and go to the moon. Man! This world is beautiful. Make of this world a beautiful place instead of the pollution that is existent right now uh, and uh, exploitation and insensitivity. We have to stop this. That is craziness. That craziness, we got to stop. The world is sick. The world needs to stop and to begin to see that we are simple, beautiful beings with the power of intention and it's called love to guarantee love uh, uh, composed by happiness, strength, and health in a confident guarantee that we are able to stand for that and to give that to our children and uh, all the beings around us. We lost it. We are into production, insensitivity, competition. We lost the best within ourselves. Our simplicity now is complicated. And there we are. And uh, it deregulates our systems. We go to the moon, we go to Mars, but we don't know how to stop autoimmune diseases, cancer, depression, and uh, and name it, and more and more. Anxiety, anxiety, fear for death, fear what is the soul, it's still unknown. And I tell you, it is the time for the soul. Through all these mechanistic uh, devices that are able to measure up until the nanometer. I mean, to everything, we will show that a purpose of life is right within us. And we have a control over the mind, possibly everybody at birthright, by birthright, to control our brain. Not 16% at will, but 100. And now we are showing this. I want people to understand, I think they're going to get it immediately emotionally, what you're saying. Like just listening to you is always intoxicating because you have so much energy and it's so infectious. The book does an extraordinary job of helping people understand how to reconnect to nature. And I want to talk about that. There's a key part in the book that I I thought was really profound around that eight-year period of your life where you were squatting. You said you'd always felt like a black sheep in your family. And that period gave you the willingness to step outside of the box, right? Walk us through that. What was that period? Why was it so meaningful to find true freedom? Yes, uh, I call it free thinking. It was a free thinking block in the middle of Amsterdam. It was a place where 100 people lived uh, together in two courtyards, a former orphanage. And I could play in the hallway guitar, the lyrics out, nobody was yelling, oh, you got to stop the music, shut up, and oh, no, I was able to do yoga naked in the courtyard, and I didn't give a shit about nobody, I felt just great doing it, and there I developed the sense to go to the park and go into the cold water, and it made me able to sit outside in the snow at a certain moment, very fast, tapping into my own system, awakening my deeper physiology to my mind. I could sit all night long in my shorts, outside in the snow. 
things like that, uh, 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 you could just let go. You had not to follow. What, what were you letting go of? Uh, letting go of this restrictive way of thinking. You got to have Going a to get a job. Got, yeah, ca career. You got to be in comp competition. You have to become better. You have to marry and uh, you have to get a house. You have to be Catholic. You have to go to church. You have to, 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 have to. That have to was gone. If you let a mind evolve naturally, it comes to great powers. And it is as, as if we enter in this society into a spell, into a spell of being limited in our uh, power to experience our soul. And what is that spell? Culture? Family pressures? All of the above? Yes. Uh, don't, uh, if you look at the world, then you see where it got to. The world is polluting and it doesn't give a shit. The world is on fire. Nobody gives a shit. Only the people, the locals, but the rest of the world is just watching. War is going on. Watching. Refugees are uh, 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 drowning. Little children are drowning. We are watching the production. That is important. Money. That is important. Competition. That is important. Uh, people die in the hospitals uh, 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 because of the uh, COVID. I, they don't talk about how to strengthen your own immune system. Why? We have shown in 2014, Tom, we have shown how to suppress effectively with a group of people. So the scientific evidence that within a quarter of an hour using a specific breathing techniques to alter the immune system, to make the innate immune system go down. That means the cytokine storm, which is the damaging factor of COVID of COVID-19 damaging factor is inflammation. Flammatory markers, number, uh, interleukin number one, number six, number eight, and number 11. I looked it all up and we already showed that in blood proof, in the whole group, it went down with a, a, within a quarter of an hour doing these breathing techniques. We from nature coming, we are built to defy disease. It is, uh, uh, oh, uh, shit happens. No, only good shit should happen. And we are in charge of just that. I will go on and show it until nature comes back and being respected. Because what we are doing now is killing nature. It's not only killing nature outside, it's killing our uh, uh, the future generations of us. Because we are wrong tracked. It's it's this system is it's is wrong. It has it's obsolete. It's like on the computer C T R L Alt Delete. No, there is a virus inside. It needs to de be debugged. Our paradigm needs to be changed, shifted. So we I want to I want to go back to that the notion of debugging. So when you're in this, uh, for lack of a better word, sort of commune. Uh, you guys don't have to worry about a job because you're only paying for utilities and you're letting go of what society is telling you. You should think of you're breaking that spell that you talked about that we're all sort of born into. That seems to me like a really important part of what you're saying, that people have to let go of all of that before they can recenter with nature. Uh, and then now once they're recentered around nature, they'll be able to start building something up, that power of intention um, in a way that makes more sense. And yes. we, we talked about this briefly in our last interview and you, you go into it in the book in a way that I'd never heard you talk about before with the suicide of your wife. And you, what I found very interesting was you said when you saw her after she had killed herself, that yes. you actually looked at her face and, and thought for the first time that the shadow that had gripped her had gone away. Um, oh, yes. Talk to me about that as, as how you chose to see it, because it would be very easy to only see the tragedy. How, how did you get yourself to a place where you could see something more? Yes. Um, when I heard she had uh, uh, jumped from the eight stories down after kissing her, uh, her babies goodbye, 
then that uh, that was a beautiful woman and you see a photo of her in the in the book she was a, 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 a beautiful woman and she was alive always and then this shadow came it was as if the accesses was there that the only way to get rid of this terror of this possessive being inside or was to jump down it was terrorizing her and that uh, I could not do anything at that moment. I could not. I was broken hearted. I went there. I cried with the father over the uh, over her dead body when it was there in the in the morgue. And uh, uh, and I saw her face. It was for the first time. It, uh, it was soft. It was Olaya uh, again, the woman I knew of before. It, uh, it was peace. Uh, 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 and the rest, uh, of course, I was broken hearted and I, uh, uh, I had to deal with four children, which I had with her. My children made me survive. The cold water it healed me because in the cold water, you don't think you go into the brainstem. You go into a non thinking part of your own brain because you have to survive at that moment, uh, freezing water. And it does it. And that gives me the slack. To, uh, for my system to go in, uh, not into a uh, crying and, and, and nervous system uh, of action and oh, 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 no, then, oh, and then the body is able to heal. It's able to go into parasympathetic mode. In nature, when, when zebras get attacked, uh, a, a, a couple of moments later, they shake it off, the fear. But in my case, uh, with humans, we hold on with through our thoughts. So, but going into the cold, and I recommend this for everybody who suffers from people who are suiciding or tragic deaths. Go into the cold water. It makes you a uh, body being able to reset, to uh, find the energy, the purpose again. Because I needed to have purpose for uh, 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 creating a new nest for my four children. Without money, I did it. I did it and they had a great youth because I was always there like the sun. I had energy all over it's, uh, because that's what the coal does. It, it gives you, you have to have energy here. Otherwise, you're going to die. So for the rest of the day, you got bloody much energy. So that, that was great for the children. And now they work with me. They work and they believe it. That before when, I were, when they were young, I could not appear on school yard in the winter time in my shorts doing, uh, uh, doing handstands and splits. Yeah, I had to uh, uh, wait like all the other mothers and fathers did smoking a cigarette and then you are normal no i was doing my sh in shorts and uh, uh, doing splits in in midwinter getting them from the school then it was not uh, they they felt a little bit ashamed but now now they know it now they have become instructors themselves into a method which bears their father's name so we are healing people by the thousands, ten, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. I don't know. I, I, I lost count. I just keep on going. The other thing is in Detroit. In Detroit, I showed in the brain scans. I showed uh, uh, that I was capable to control. This is what they said. The, uh, 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 now we have the compelling evidence of the key components of the autonomous processes Autonomous is outside of our will, now it's inside of our will, uh, related to mood regulation. The autonomous processes in the brain related to mood regulation. And then he said, uh, the professor, Vaibhav Divakar, he told me, Wim, this technique, is, uh, this transformational technique will go and change mental health care. And then my cycle was round. Because when my wife died, I was hopeless. I was powerless. I could not do anything. And they shot uh, injections, pills, 
therapy, it only went down, 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 down. Nothing. But now, uh, let me tell you, anybody who's depressed and is going to start to do this and uh, to do it right, you will get a c absolute control within his brain over whatever is happening over there. The biochemistry, the hormonal uh, uh, homeostasis of dopamine, serotonin, he, gets, uh, uh, he will learn to regulate his mood at will. This was thought of in psychiatry, impossible, only long therapy. I see, and I tell you, within 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most, people get the sense that they are in control. If they're there doing it, it that fast, is that through the breathing work or is that from the cold exposure or sort of interrupting their negative thoughts? What, how is it able yes. to take hold so fast? So, uh, with the breathing, uh, uh, with the breathing techniques, you absolutely enter into the stress mode. They saw this. This is what they saw. Uh, the, uh, uh, the principle is right, in when your functionality needs to be at best, that's in danger. Then the adrenal axis is activated. And anything that should not be there to, uh, to interrupt with the functionality, to flee and or fight, that is going to be get rid of. The body knows how to do that. One thing is depression. The other thing is disease. That's why people, when they are in war and somebody shot their leg off, they still are able to order the people around uh, because their adrenaline is going. So they don't feel it. Their opioids are there. It's blocked. They got to function. That's what, uh, that's what that adrenaline is now. They did compare the breathing exercises in the blood, blood samples, uh, to uh, 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 people lying on, uh, on the bed sofa. Uh, they compared the blood results together with people going into their first, in fear, into their first bungee jump. And they saw the people doing uh, the breathing exercises, lying, feeling kind of high on their own supply, like high-ish, nice, and they had more adrenaline lying on bed than the people in fear going into their first bungee jump. That's so, so counterintuitive, Wim, that you would, one would think if you've got somebody who's depressed that you want to calm them down, you want to get them to relax and make things easy. The idea of getting them so stressed through breathing that they have a higher stress response than somebody who's about to bungee jump, that's yes. really intriguing. Yes, and the thing is, they don't notice that uh, consciously, they feel kind of high-ish. Uh, it's, it's, uh, this breathing technique is so amazing. I was uh, uh, doing this with the people who are uh, paralyzed. And these breathing exercises, they exercise the vascular system more than somebody who is running. Imagine people wow. who are paralyzed. They cannot run. They cannot walk. They can't do anything like that. And now they are able through breathing exercises to exercise their a vascular system more than somebody is running and more adrenaline than somebody who is going into its first bungee jump. What a healing properties it must have. They get to their functionality. They felt happy. That's what they said. This should be spread all over the world in any revalidation center in the world doing, do it, do it guys, do it and train and stimulate also your vascular system with gold, uh, uh, gold, uh, hand gloves in ice water and do it like this. Because even though you don't feel it, it still reacts. And you know what happens? It, the, all the veins, they are connected to the nervous system. To open and close is the nervous system. So it is an indirect way to uh, reboot to, uh, to, 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 get the, to uh, get, get the engine going in a different way. They should bloody investigate. Any doctor who is listening now, get into this shit because it really works. So getting back with the depression, the depression, the hormonal system is at work. There is a lack of serotonin and dopamine. That is depression. Depression is loss of pressure. 
loss of pressure uh, uh, caused by a, uh, a disequilibrium of dopamine serotonin in the cell, in the neurons, so uh, uh, in the ganglia inside. And uh, so there is a lack, and that's what we call depression. Then you don't feel good. When you get into adrenaline, then it shoots out through the body and it rebalances everything what needs to be rebalanced. It's directly connected because adrenaline is a hormone. It knows those are messengers, electrical signals, and they they do the thing almost instantly. Bang, choo, choo, choo. Is there a little blockage of conditioning, a wrong uh, wiring of uh, such a long time? It just passed through because it's stronger than somebody who goes into his first bungee, bungee jump. I mean, you are not even aware that it is happening uh, uh, when you are lying there and doing the breathing. And uh, But afterwards, you will see people uh, who are depressed suddenly have to, wow, I didn't feel so good since, I don't know what happened. What happened? You know, being flabbergasted, that's what you want in the beginning with people, not talking, no cognitive th therapy, let them do, and feeling is the understanding. This is all, all what I'm saying about the ancestry, about uh, uh, the way the cell works, uh, the telomeres, the gene expressions. Uh, I go anywhere until this the, uh, nature is back to us to be lived in harmony with and to be happy, strong, and healthy for everybody in the world. And there is little money present because unconditional love doesn't need money. If you are in love in a woman, man, you fly. You don't think. That's what you want. You want to feel the love for life. And that's who we are spiritually and that this is all about. And I like your questions. And I like your inquisitive nature since the last time you did your homework. That's good because I want to polish the diamond of the truth anytime through the right critical questions. So I'm on there and uh, uh, together we are like brothers, spiritual brothers. We bring evidence-based clarity to the people and, uh, and we develop ways together. Uh, you got a lot of money, but you don't give a shit about it, buddy. You give a shit about this. And that is good. That is the goodness of your heart. It's still there. That makes you a very good man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that very much. I love that you're willing to put this all out there, that you're willing to be tested. I remember the first time I came across you, God, 15 years ago? I mean, it's a long time ago. And it was the, I think the BBC documentary you did about becoming superhuman or whatever. And you were, of course, the Iceman and they showed you doing all the crazy feats that you've done. Um, you're now, you've run a marathon without water in the desert. People think of you, obviously, as the Iceman for very clear reasons. But I see you now experimenting with other things. How did you manage to run a marathon? I don't think people could do that in a normal environment, let alone in the middle of the desert. Um, is it just that this applies to controlling your physiology? Like, how, how did that work? Or did you have to train for the heat? Uh, no, absolutely no training. I, I'm not a runner at all. I just got an idea. That was half a year before I run the marathon. That was my second marathon. The first one was uh, like, uh, it, was, it was the BBC who called me. He said, well, we got a series on the superhuman, we got the Spider-Man, we got the man on wire, and we got the Birdman, and you, they call you the Iceman. I thought, wow, nice, nice name. So, yes, do you know any by any chance uh, any challenge coming up and you could be in the series? And then I made it up while I was on the phone. Yes, I can run, a, I never run a, a marathon at all. I, I, I'm not into running, maybe a couple of miles, that's it. But I will run a marathon, and it's in two months? Okay, in two months I will run a marathon mid-January, beyond the polar circle, in my shorts. Yes, 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 <laughs> they, they said. And then two months later I was there. And when I did it, then I thought, hey, I did it all. I stood in the ice, I swam in the ice, I, uh, I've been running, 
uh, I've been climbing mountains in the ice, all in short. I did it. You know what? Now I will go to the heat. So half a year later, without training, I was in the Namib desert and I ran a marathon, full marathon because of my confidence, because I know how to deal with stress. That's it. I got deep confidence therein. It's like if you know how to drive, you you don't feel anxiety going into the car and going to drive. But uh, it's foolish to go without anxiety and you cannot drive because uh, accidents will happen. But I was trained. I got my driver license by years going into stressful situations. And that the cold uh, teaches you not only to how to deal with temperature mechanisms in the deep, uh, the depth of the brain, but it also che- teaches you how to deal with stress how to go consciously into the stress. So the the preparation I did before running into the marathon in the Namib desert was drinking two cups of coffee. <laughs> that, that it was. And then when... I did that. Then I did that and I did a, a lot of different uh, uh, challenges. And every time you go into the unknown and the moral of it all is if you go to something stressful that is hormetic exercising, which is going to be a new uh, area of exploration for all scientists in the world. We are inaugurating this now uh, with a DNA study with the be- top researchers in the, in the US. And uh, then it, it's a new area where the brain, it, uh, the threshold of the power of the mind is going to be opened to the awareness of everybody in the world. What you do with it is your business. I love it, man. Wim, where can people find you? Where can they get the book, The Wim Hof Method? Yeah, uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't I love know. that about you. I don't know where they can get the book. Uh, is it Amazon or something? It, it will uh, certainly yeah. be on Amazon, absolutely. Um, I'm sure everywhere oh, yeah, books are sold. Yes, Amazon. Amazing. Amazon. I heard Amazon. And, uh, and uh, uh, there is a free app. This is a free app. On our, We develop this. And uh, every month we update and we make it better. And it's a beautiful app. It works wonders. Millions are doing this now. May, uh, yes. Uh, uh, and so it's for free. And we put a lot of money into it. So it is accessible. You don't need to buy the book. But do the app. Do the app and get and explore the depth of yourself. It's accessible now. It's powerful, effective. It's called love for life. I love it, man. Guys, check out the book. He puts himself out there in the way that he does everywhere, giving you things you can use to cure a headache. Uh, For anybody that uh, wants this one, he's got coverage on how to deal with a hangover. He's got all kinds of stuff. He walks you through step by step on how to do the Wim Hof method. And this book was really beautiful in a way that I found um, moving and surprising going into how he developed discipline as a kid, the things we talked about, the traumatic birth, the invocation, and how to make that all meaningful, how to let go of the trappings that society puts on everybody to dare to be different. It's really, really good, and it touches on things that um, you might not expect in a book titled The Wim Hof Method. It is far bigger than just cold exposure, just breathing. Uh, it really does dive into the power of the mind. Wim, as always, my friend, thank you so much for joining me. And guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. By being non-stimulative in our behavior, we lost the connection in the depth of our physiology. Cause we are able to adapt about to anything. Mm. We are built to be able to adapt without stress into any stressful situation and get a solution. The body knows.